Welcome back to Kumamoto. We're at quarter-final stage at the Kumamoto Masters here on the island of Kyushu, the southernmost of the four more main islands that make up Japan. Well, after that excellent women's doubles, we turn our attention once again to men's singles, and we have the Olympic champion back from injury, Victor Axelson, the current world number one, up against Jonathan Christie in the recent winner of the French 750 title. After this men's singles, we will finish with men's doubles, so plenty more to look forward to. As we look at the draw from the quarter-final stage of the men's singles, only three seeds, only one in the bottom half of the draw, as I was telling you earlier, and that was Shiyu Chi, who we saw beat Kento Momota in two straight games. So the bottom half of the draw decided. I can tell you that Anna's Antonsen against Takuma Obayashi is in a third and deciding game. The Japanese home player is 15-11 up in the deciding game. So it could be an all Danish semi-final in the top half of the draw, or it could be four players with four different flags next to their name at semi-final stage, and that would be wonderful. We all like to see diversity and players excelling from different nations. players just making their way onto court. Here they are, the tall dame, the Olympic champion, the two-time former world champion, Victor Axelson. And his opponents, the winner of the 2018 Asian Games gold medal, Jonathan Christie. Well, this, like our previous men's singles, a quarter-final a couple of matches ago is a 12th meeting between the two players of the previous 11. Victor Axelson has won nine of them. Look at the height difference. Okay, come here he really the is a giant Red of a man, isn't he, black. Victor Axelson? Last time they Red. met was black. in the semi-final of the China Super 1000. Okay. And Victor Axelson Five, has chosen okay, ends. Having lost won the toss of the coin. And in fact, at the China Open, Victor Axelson went on to complete uh, the, a career Grand Slam of Super 1000 tournaments. And he's the only player on the planet that has, or had, and pre presumably has the capability of doing that uh, because he won three Super 1000 events that are no longer 1000 tournaments. Those were, of course, during the global pandemic. He's 29 years of age and he's enjoying his 154th week in total as world number one. Six finals this year, winning five titles in Malaysia, Indonesia. Those were two Super 1000 events. The European Games as well, he won. And one here in Japan, the Japan Open. So six finals from 12 tournaments. And he had his uh, problems in the second round yesterday, but in the first round beat the Southeast Asian Games silver medalist Chiko Wodoyo in two straight, and then the Commonwealth Games silver medalist Ng Si Yong of Malaysia dropped the opening game and came back 21-18 in the deciding game. So good to see him back after the injury problems he experienced during the European leg of the tour. Jonathan Christie had a wonderful tour in Europe. He's 26 years of age now, and ranked four, but did spend 10 weeks as world number two. Born in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta, and he's not as short as the 179 is five foot 10. And he has been in four finals this year, winning three titles, the Indonesian Masters, the Hong Kong Open, and the recent French Open I was telling you about. 
Well, in the first round, I thought that uh, Chiyu Jen was actually a qualifier rather Ready than promoted from the qualifying. And then Suli Yang had to come from 17-20 down in that deciding game, saving three match points before winning yesterday's match. 22-20 in an hour and 20 minutes. That really was a thrilling match. I caught glimpses of it out of the corner of my eye. So our court officials from Japan and Thailand for this one. Back injury for Axelsen at the French Open, having had a foot injury the week before at the Denmark Open. Often happens like that. You get an injury somewhere, you try and compensate your movement to save the foot injury, and in trying to compensate the movement, uh, you cause another injury, and that was to the back. But good to see him back playing, and he had to work hard for his victory over the Malaysian yesterday, and you see Yong. So the Olympic champion and current world number one from Denmark, Victor Axelsen, far side of the court against the informed Jonathan Christie, number six seed from Indonesia. And that's gone long off the back line. Now, before one, we really get uh, no. ourselves embroiled into this match, I can bring you right up to date. And Takuma Obayashi of Japan has put out the three-time world championship medalist, Anas Antonsen. 21-12 in the deciding game. That is a huge result for Obayashi. So, Chris, we saw the head-to-heads, uh, the 11 previous meetings. Oh, my goodness, that was a late decision. No wonder he lost the rally there. And Time Victor Axelsen has won one. nine of the oh. previous 11. Uh, but I think the most important thing is the fact that Victor Axelsen has won the last six encounters. That suggests he's got the measure of uh, Jonathan Christie. But if Jonathan Christie wants to break the run, now's as good a time as any because, of course, Axelsen's coming back from injury. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a... You've got two phenomenal players, I think. The thing with Victor yesterday for me wasn't quite as good as he normally Two, is. Um, and he is coming back from a, a reasonable time off in regards to momentum. He doesn't have it. He hasn't had continuous tournaments because of those injuries. Um, he's won, He's beaten him three times this year, Victor has. So, yeah, he's definitely kind of got the run of how to play. Um, so sneaked out, yeah how to play Jonathan Christie, um, but you just don't know how he's going to perform today because I think in, in his first round victory is very good, in his second round he wasn't as good and I just don't think he's quite found his momentum yet. I think in his match against N.C. Yong, I think an awful lot of that was nerves because of course N.C. Yong uh, beat Victor Axelsen in the second round of this year's All England Championships when at the time Victor Axelsen was defending Three. champion Hill. and I think psychologically that uh, caused a lot of anguish for the Dane. Uh, and the Malaysian played quite brilliantly. The Malaysian has improved immeasurably over the last 12, 18 months or so. And I think an awful lot of yesterday's match was that Victor Axelsen was nervous. Yeah, Victor, he, he did look quite frustrated through large parts of the game, I, I would agree. And Sion, he did play well, and he had, he's one of the most improved players probably in the men's singles category over the last 12 months or so. He really has kind of risen. I think today it's... Whenever I watch Jonathan Christie play, his, his movement, if there's any young players out there looking how to move around the court, you want to try and emulate how Jonathan Christie moves. He's such a smooth mover and he's got such good footwork. Just 
Patrick Sloan. Better or equal Three. to Anthony Ginting's movement? So this is where... Oh, it's a tricky one, that yeah. you. <laughs> so I would say, for me, for pure speed, Ginting is, is Mr. Lightning Bolt. So I'd say for pure speed, but I'd say for power, explosive power, I do think Jonathan Christie, and I do think Big. Jonathan has the best, Three. for me anyway, the, the smoothest, the best footwork, but for raw speed, I mean, at times you can't see Jinting, although saying that, Loken, you also can be a, a human lightning bolt as well. ever since we've come out of the global pandemic has been a different player to the player he was before COVID struck the world. I think he used the, the break as an opportunity. Most people were downhearted and frustrated by it. If I was one of them. But I think Victor Axelsson saw it as a great opportunity to work on his physical fitness, work on certain aspects of his game. And I think that since then, he's played unbelievable badminton. 2021, seven titles. And ten finals from 13 tournaments played. 2022, eight titles from eight finals in 12 tournaments. I mean, that, that's staggering statistics. But I would agree, and I'd say that some of it, well, some of it, a lot of it stems from he is the most professional player. I mean, everything he does is planned, it's organized, it's structured, and he does it to a T. And this is why when he plays well, he's almost unplayable. Great pickup, Christy. The speed there. And again. Mr. Yeah, and it's that sort of retrieving that will frustrate the day. Exactly, and this is what I did see yesterday. Victor when he played in Sion. The control from there, he's taken that off the floor and he's got a net cord. Okay, Jonathan, please show the point. struggling in his match yesterday when he started that far Ten. side of the Four. court. Axelson struggling to control the shuttle when hitting with the drift. I think I remember saying to you, uh, Chris, that if the Dane had had the choice of ends, he didn't win the toss before him yesterday. I thought he would have preferred to start that Ten. far side and, and he was given that opportunity because Aung San Yong chose the near side to start. Yeah, and that's seen today then indeed that was the case well, generally you want to finish that overall match down the better end if possible perfect right into the corner you couldn't have walked over there over. with shuffle in hand Level and placed five. it any better than that so it is a six-point advantage for the number six seed jonathan christie here at the mid-game interval of the opening game Right into the corner, my goodness me. That is perfection. Yeah. 
Pak Dewi aja dari papan saat depan kalau udah turun jangan dipaksa buat nendok. Mau nanti dulu. Ya. 20 seconds. Fourth <coughs> one. 20 seconds. Ho. Oh. 11 5. Play. So 11-5, the advantage. Hey! Oh! Uh, he was doing that yesterday. Six, Having to 11, urge himself on six. verbally. He's come out from the break, he's a slightly different player. Seven. Almost energized. Attack there and the speed of the follow up. Good placement as well on the kill. Well, the last time that Jonathan Christie actually beat Victor Axelsson was in the semi-final of the French Open back in 2019. And Victor Axelsson was 19-10 up in the deciding game, got cramp and lost to 19. All credit to Axelsson, who didn't quit. I mean, he could hardly move. Victor, 13. incredible net shot. Oh. Just a wrong shot there from Victor. Trying to really lift off the smash. Cover. 14, so ends up going in nine. the middle and pretty much half court. Victor Both Lee. players moving the shuttle around the court really well, though. Victor wide and again the court needs to be mopped because as soon as the player puts a hand down on the court surface the players feel that the perspiration that's been left there needs to be mopped up thank you back on court service over Ten, 
14. Yeah, that's good from Christie. He's he's not happy. He managed to deal with it extremely well. Fifteen. Ten. Thanks for just putting his racket up to, with the hope that the kill from Jonathan Christie would bounce off his racket. That's a great return of a fake serve. Crossover. 11, 15. Not sure, yeah. I think just going back to Christie, I think he was just signaling maybe they thought slight interference because it is a bit of a grey zone of. The player's allowed to try and play the shot, but they can't obviously interfere with the other player playing the shot. And sometimes I do think when someone's trying to do that, it's, it does encroach slightly. Uh, I think he, he's feeling that the racket is maybe cracked. Yeah, yeah, after he that attempted defensive shot. I think, yeah, you're right, Jill, when he just lost his balance slightly and tried to move, the racket just hit the floor. Sacrifice power for placement. Slightly concerned after the rally, though, I thought Axelson was just stretching his back. Mm, don't think we'll get to see it. That was just inside the sideline. I think even as quick and as athletic as Jonathan Christie is, not even he can get that because it is literally on the line or, you know, half an inch inside the line. The accuracy from Victor then was incredible. That's why Victor's so good. He's got the big power, he's got the accuracy, he's got the variation. One point in it. 14, 15. I think was a very, very important rally. It had been a run of four straight points from the day to get back to within a point of his opponent. Uh, what wonderful tactical play from both players. All four corners of the court That's used. It. 50 That's shots, my goodness me. Back on court. Okay, sorry. 
Uh, this is where time is wasted. Why on earth wasn't the court mopped while Jonathan Christie was okay, at the kit box? Jonathan Christie had not been fooled at all by the sort of double action drive shots played to the back of the court from Axelson. 15, 16. the sort of error he was making yesterday, Axelson, which I think is a lack of match fitness. I'd definitely say it's an uncharacteristic mistake from Victor Day. He's in a good position, comfortable shot. long three point advantage and three points away from the 18, opening game 15 touch shot from Victor Axelson and you know I was mentioning a moment ago about match fitness and the difference between physically being fit and match fitness is match fitness is you, you're so used to playing intense games and in pressure situations you know you can make the shot you were saying earlier Chris it's so different in practice to match competition and I think those, you know, that little bit of tension, maybe, not be match fit. I think it's one of the it's one of the hardest things to try and recreate in training because you. you're playing against the same people over and over again, which isn't realistic. 19, and also the environment, it, you're used to it, not realistic. And the outcome, it matters, but it doesn't matter if you get what I mean. So it's so hard to Wait. replicate a tournament situation in training. Two points needed for the opening game for Christie. One point needed. 20, game point, 15. Considerable margin. 21 15, the opening okay. game to Jonathan Bye -bye. Christie. Jonathan Christie. 21 15. 23 minutes. Yeah, but as far as Axelson is concerned, he's going to play the second game from his favoured end, playing against the drift. Oh, what a good opening game from Jonathan Christie. Very impressive. A 
Probleme, Probleme. Das ist ein Trainer, also ich bin gerade wenig straff, die da. Ah. Also er ist straff, ob ich ihn ah. noch ein Liga drücker. Also so spiller vi bare igen. Ja, men tryk, ja, men det er, når han løfter flat på dig her, ikke? Ja, skal... øhm, dem straffer jeg jo ikke engang. Ah, ja. Det bliver jo. Ja, men så, så skal du lige få det, det forreste. Skal jeg lige prøve herovre og se, om jeg kan køre. Ja. Det kommer trods alt lidt bedre igen, ikke? Men han kommer i hvert fald hele tiden med det åbne med det, med det foran dig, så der må du stille dig frem. seconds. Fourth one, 20 seconds. Back on court. Second game. Play. Love all. Play. So one game to the good. Jonathan Christie of Indonesia against the reigning Olympic champion, Victor Axelsson. So I'm interested, Chris, what would you have been no. advising Axelsson tactically to change in this second game? This is the thing, I think, for me, Victor's got to, he's got to try and get the net. He's got such good net, but at the moment, I feel the speed of Christie is... Has that gone over? No. no. Yeah, it has. It did go over, my goodness. Cool. I don't know if we're going to see what exactly happened there in the replay. Yeah, sorry, carry on. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think because obviously we've seen Victor's attack's phenomenal, but he hasn't been in a good position with the attack enough for me. When he's been playing or trying to get the net, I think a few simpler mistakes have crept in. I do think it hasn't helped that... It's a start to the second game, but I mean, Chris, he's played very well so far. And he's physically looking incredible, moving so quick. He's on everything early kind of reading the majority of what Victor's doing. I feel like he's kind of half a step ahead most of the game. Oh, both players examining the strings for their yeah. rackets. Yeah, but when you say that Victor Axelsson's got to get the net, how is he going to do that? Tactically, what has he got to do well, he's got to, to get the net? Step up, he's got to get there earlier to be able to play the net. He's got to be slightly less concerned about going over. I mean, he can't. What do you mean going over? As in yeah. Christie lifting. Ah, oh, right, OK. Because Christie's not going to comfortably lift just because it's slightly, only slightly trickier to lift that side. And also, he's playing possibly the most dangerous player in the world overhead. So if he's just passively lifting, he's giving Victor what he, what he wants. I mean, Victor can't go 100% all in to get the net because he's still playing one of the best players in the world. Um, but I do think it's got to be a case of, and that shows it is difficult to go over. So it's why Victor has to have a higher base and be slightly less concerned about the rear of the four. Three, four. went over from Axelsson. And that's the sort of rally can, that can change a whole momentum of a match. Perfectly permissible. You're shaking your head. No, 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 I'm just... I don't know how these things happen. I don't know how Victor managed to get that. I think it was a slight miss hit, but... If I tried to do that, I would have hit myself on the head or something. Yeah, because he's not, not going over, so I said Victor's got to just have a slight more awareness to be, to be moving forward. They both seem to be getting the court wiped a lot. I don't know if it's very, very hot with the lights and they're sweating a, a lot, or... I feel like we've had the court mopped about ten okay. times. Well, it's wherever they're putting the hand down. I don't think it's but if it's just droplets a, of I think perspiration. Be, if it's just a hand, I think I would have thought the umpire would just say, use your feet. Four. 
really trying to fire himself up. He was doing that yesterday. That's a shocking serve. Yeah! And he got away with it. So, hand went down there. And once again, stay on court. Stay on court. Axelson asking for the court to be mopped. Thank you. I think Victor did incredible to end up winning that point because it did stem from the serve. It was a loose serve, and he was under so much pressure in that rally, but somehow he managed to come out on top. Yeah! Yeah! Well, seven over the last eight points. Four. For Axelson. Huh. Yeah. Good pressure from yeah, the front of the court. That's pressure. That's over. Five, seven. As soon as he gets Victor in trouble there, he just has a higher base and she keeps the pressure on him. Victor can't get it away. Ish errors coming from Jonathan. Oh dear. That's another cheap point. This is the thing we're talking about number one in the world and number four in the world, and you don't really expect any gifts to be given to each other. Brilliant. Yeah. Utterly brilliant. That round the head cross court smash. Leaps from the base position in the centre of the courts. The push was flat, so Back for him court. to be able to play that Thank cross court you. smash, that was sensational. Fab's over. I think Victor, after the point, shook his head because he knows he played the wrong shot. It was the wrong trajectory and the wrong shot, which set him Six. set himself up to be in trouble. Nine. But yeah, fantastic shot from. Jonathan with the placement as well, but he read it so well. That's a good smash. Wow. Uh, knew immediately it left the racket. That was going to be a winner. That was good defence from Axelson.
Okay, on court. What on court? Well, the umpire was asking both players okay, to stay on court. Axelson had a word with the umpire. And while the court is being mocked, players are allowed to have a quick Service towel over. down. A. They're allowed to have Ten. a quick towel down even when the court okay. isn't being mocked. No change. I couldn't hear what right. Axelson was saying. Change there from both players Nine, for the skill there from Jonathan ten. to keep that net and not have to lift. That there, that's so tight. Missed it. So it is a two point advantage for Victor Axelson. Here at the mid game interval of the second game. Ja, ja, ja. 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 Og hvis der er fart i mellemspillet, så Amazing nine. shot. Crikey, that was just inside the line too. Thank, thank you. This is the thing when Victor gets the lift in that situation. It's so dangerous because he can do that. He can he can he can kind of do anything. forward from Axelson and quick thinking there with the brush shot to keep the shuttle straight. So the racket movement ten. looks as if he's going to go cross court and then he turns that racket head at last moment to keep the shuttle straight. That totally ten. deceived Jonathan Christie. I do feel in this second game a little bit more. Victor's had the attack in a good position. And this is where he's showing how dangerous he is. He knew when he hit that smash, he could just storm forward. Subs over eleven thirteen.
the problem for Christie is that he has to play over. some to the back of the court. 14, because otherwise, 11. Victor Axelson will just only be playing half court forward. So he's got to play some to the back. But then it becomes so dangerous because Axelson's so good on his attacking play. Yeah, I think there for me, I think I do think he could have held net there, as in played to the net, um, Jonathan. I don't think he had to lift in that situation. I do think even if he's neutralising, he's put, like doing a deep net, pushing it in. He's, he's got to be careful maybe lifting quite as much as he is because Victor's showing his his over overhead power, finesse, variation. Wow. Oof. Oh, it's just long. Christy a little bit 12, lucky there. Yeah, all the, all the I don't think he would have got that, even with his he phenomenal was, speed. He's no, he was nowhere near it. He might try and argue left it. <laughs> Good early judgment. <laughs> yeah. Over pushing. Yeah, he read it perfect. He was so high 13, at his base. He was 14. up there so early. He's just trying to play too good a shot. He could have just maybe played to the net and got the lift. over the net, straight down the line, 14 all. very definite, so I'm well, very much in a better position to see than I am. We're at a slight angle to the court and some considerable distance away. Here we go. What does the instant review say? Well done, line judge. That's what challenge and the instant score. review One says. Remaining. This is the thing, it totally depends where you are, because I would agree with you, Joe. I actually thought they clipped the line, 15, but because of the angle we're 14. at, it's very hard yeah. to see. Quick. So into the lead. Six points. Yes. Steepness of shot doing the damage. Fans over. Fifteen. All. Okay. Is that a blood injury? Yeah, I think so. Well. Quite often when players are diving to try and retrieve the shuttle, injury, yeah. they bleeding. graze the little finger. And indeed, I think that's what's happened here. of all sport is that blood injuries must be treated straight away. Obvious reasons. But I think putting a plaster on is not going to help. The plaster will come off within seconds. Well, it defeats the whole point of a blood injury being treated when the medic isn't wearing surgical gloves. One rally. 
that little plaster. Fifteen all. Fifteen all. Play. that down the line with the look from Jonathan Christie towards his opponent was very very telling thank you okay thank you change Attacking play there from Jonathan Christie down the forehand side of the day, then pushed him to the backhand side, and then another attacking shot down the forehand. That is utterly brilliant. It was the quality of that first attack that did it because it was so accurate that you can see Victor's then just over. having a chase. Well, I think these. Final few 16. rallies of this second oh. game are all going to come down to nerves. I do think it's so important for both players if there's any kind of gap at the net. Got to play to the net. If the player's at the net, you can afford to go over, but they can't afford to just move the shuttle around slowly and lift too much. What a time for the first service error of the match. Well, I said nerves, tension, playing its part. No doubt about it. So again, every time Chris is going over. He's just putting himself in trouble. 16. He's got to go a fraction higher. He can, he, I do think, though, he can keep the net there. He doesn't have to lift that. <laughs> Two point cushion. Net's so good that when he gets the chance, Jonathan's got to just 17, keep hold of the net. 18. Oh, what on earth happened there? Was that somebody in the crowd? I missed it. I think they were doing <laughs> shouts at each other. It's gone wide, that's sloppy. Yeah, he knows it. Jonathan Christie jumping up and down on the spot after he made that error. That's a sign of frustration. We're seeing this last little bit. Jonathan has given two gifts to Victor. Two point advantage and two points away from taking the second game. Yeah. 
game point opportunities. Three of them for Victor Axelson. Yeah, point. Four of the points. Okay, Victor played one really good point. But three of the rallies, he just stayed in the rally, and Jonathan was just a service mistake. We had the rally before this, then that one, where they're just comfortable errors. Thank you. They're the most important part of the match. Three game points to send this to a third and deciding game. Well, it touched him, didn't it? Victor, Axel, that was challenge. miles long. I Hold thought the shuttle out. landed miles long. But I thought it may have touched Christie. Well, if he's wrong on this, he hasn't got any challenges left. Yeah, it was miles long. Challenge and successful. No challenges remaining. Sub's over. 18 20. Play. States. Oh, now there's a challenge from okay. Christie. Oh, sorry. Jonathan Christie I don't think he'll win this challenge. Out. I think that was a fraction wide, but I don't think we've got one right today, have we, Chris? Blame on the angle, actually. <laughs> Indeed, we were right. Okay. It was wide, and it is one game all. One game, one by Victor Akende. 21-18, 20, one, one game all, confirms the umpire. 51 minutes into the match, and we will be treated to a third and deciding game. surprised if Victor Axelson gets a time violation here because he changed his socks certainly whether he changed his shoes as well and he's not back on court so he's taking longer than the two-minute timeout final game level Play. So third and deciding game. Victor Axelson having taken that second game after Jonathan Christie won the first. Beautiful. What a wonderful angle. That's over. Yeah, absolutely One perfect shot. Sure. 
playing two titles in the last four tournaments that he's played for this man. And I think it's safe to say he's in good form. It's too flat, you can't play that flat in and up with direction to Victor. One, oh. I do think as well when I watch Jonathan play sometimes, sometimes when he doesn't perform to his best, shot selection, and sometimes he almost tries something slightly too much because he looks like one of the most complete players. But don't you think in a situation like that, that there was so much pressure from Axelsson, there wasn't anything else he could do? But it was the, sh you know, the shot that he, for me, that he put him in trouble was the one before, as in when he went flat. He could have played net, he could have lifted, he could have moved the shuttle away, but he was below tape, hitting flat, but in an upward direction. Victor's, is that oh. out? Victor's too, he's too tall, he's going upwards to his forearm. No yeah. Well, yeah. he was challenging. Okay, I can yeah. do that once also. <laughs> okay. Jonathan, then, then changes his that. mind. No, I, I don't think yeah. that's technically should have happened. Two, one. Well, both players have accepted it in good spirit, and that's lovely to see. from Christie is in upwards flat without making a move. confident you can't let him play like this right now because it's just going to sneak further and further away yeah oh. well not only has he had his injury rose of course but perhaps has been decidedly lacking confidence his last three tournaments he played he's 
had two first round losses and a second round loss. Two of those he pulled out of. But prior to that, there was the Hong Kong Open where he was the number one seed. He lost first round. Yeah. I do think it was partly tournament before, which I think was China Open. It was. He won. And I think he's realized now he's, he can't do two in a row. Um, just it takes too much out of him in a tournament, uh, I think. I don't think that's... No? No. I think of all the players, he's, he's the only one that's, that's managing to do well week in, week out. If you look over the last two years, unless something's changed drastically, I, th I think he's very careful about how many tournaments he plays, oh. and I'm quite surprised that he's played this event when we've got the China 750 next week. But I think under the top committed players' regulations, he had to play two uh, 500 events this year. Hong Kong was one of them, and this is the second one. And the other thing is the tour final. If he didn't play this, it would put a lot of pressure on next week and the China Masters having to perform. Yeah. He's only number seven on the list, and it's only the top seven that will go because we just won the world champion gets an automatic invite, and he's not in the top eight. That's the thing, the points are so big for the tour final. I mean, also the prize money. The prize money now is getting better and better. Okay, thank you. Thank you. lead for Victor Axelson as they change ends in this decided game. Nine point advantage against Jonathan Christie. that again just watch where the shuttle lands in comparison to Christie's defensive stance that was in front of him with a smash from the back of the court from Axelson that is outrageously good that Christie needs to take this initiative. Three, two, I think he's got to be the player that's hitting in a downward direction. I know that Axelson's defense is good, but I don't see that lifting the shuttle is going to get him anywhere. Or just being reactive to whatever the Dane throws at him. given away the initiative. Now he has it back. No, he doesn't. 
I know he won the points, but at least two opportunities in that rally. I felt that Jonathan Four, Christie thrill. gave the attacking opportunity to the Dane. Pushing up enough that it's beneficial. I think Vic Victor's just starting to read a lot of what Jonathan Christie's doing. Wow. What, what, what sort of return of service that? Yeah, and, and this is it. You, you can't just give Victor the lift. It's a nice lift. He's on balance. He's in control. And I mean, Victor's accuracy is absolutely incredible. much better from Christie on the return of serve and that. Giving away the, with a high clear. This is the thing, he, you know, I would say now that Jonathan has to go literally, I'm not saying no lift at all, but a no lift style, because every time he's going out with a lift to clear anything, Victor's reading it and he's just so dangerous overhead. Well, he's just got so much time to yeah. go back for that one. And he's got to almost lure Victor in, so there is a gap at the back, whereas at the moment there's not, because Victor's just reading what Jonathan's doing. I'm sure his coach will be suggesting something similar there. He's got to play more, you know, hold the net, play more to the front. Trying one of his specialities, Victor Axelson. Five fifteen. and Victor is a clean winner. Too little, too late. Thumbs over. Six, 17. Over. 
Well, all we need is that 19-10 scoreline, and then me and the Jonathan Christie will believe again. Paris 2019. What a victory that was. Even on that one, Jonathan's read it. 19, read it well, but all the mistakes are sneaking in. A big gulp of air from Jonathan Christie. Nine, twenty. Hour and eleven minutes. They've been on court. Sportsmanship shown between the two players, great respect for each other, and that really Thank is you. lovely to see. Put his racket up to defend himself. Jonathan Christie's kill. The shuttle hits Axelson's racket and pop back over the net. So, three-game victory. 15-21-21-18-21-9. Umpar confirming that scoreline. Hour and 12 minutes in the end for the victory. Well, he's been made to work very hard in his last two matches. Yesterday against Eng Siong of Malaysia and today against Jonathan Christie coming from a game down. 15-21, 21-18, 21-9 in the deciding game in an hour and 12 minutes.